journey, really, of enlightenment, aren't we? And we talk about that so often. We're here to become enlightened. And does that word resonate with you? How many of you, I remember when I was on TV when I had a Christian television program on Christian Television Network, and this lady that ordained me used to say, don't say consciousness, don't say enlightenment. You know, those words were like new age words. But now they're common. I mean, because we all know, and especially where we are, that we want to be enlightened. We want to become that, that light. So it resonates with us, and it feels like it's a driving force in our life, isn't it? I mean, we're all here this morning to learn something. We're all here this morning to expand our divinity and really become more enlightened. But what is enlightenment? It's not just a flash of realization, like when you have a flash of oneness or you have a, a, a deep insight. And how many of you have had that? Well, you've had a flash where all of a sudden you're one with everything. Or you have this deep insight. But really, enlightenment is not that. That's really a realization that's really taking us on the path. And it can happen in a flash, but guess what happens? It leaves in a flash too, doesn't it? We have that insight, or we have that moment that we're one with everything, and then all of a sudden it, it's gone. And you feel like you lost something. Because we're really, it's not about those flashes, it's about something so much bigger, and that's what I want to talk about today. You know, it, it happens, and enlightenment is the process of integrating those realizations. It's the process of integrating those flashes of oneness and digesting it over time until it really becomes a part of you. So what I want to say this morning is enlightenment is a process. You know, so many people say we're enlightened, but it's really a process of life right now. Enlightenment is a process of completion of the integration of your realization when you finally are realized being. And what is life all about? Life is all about be becoming enlightened. It's about digesting and integrating all of these moments when we have those flashes. I mean, I can think of all of the experiences I've had. Some out-of-body experiences, some kundalini experiences, some visions that I've had, but it, it wasn't a total change. What it is, is you begin to integrate those into your life and they really become part of the process of becoming enlightened. So it's no use trying to hurry the journey because it's not about an endpoint, but about using every experience to be part of your enlightenment. Enlightenment is a process of integrating your realization and it can't be rushed, even if you feel like you're close to enlightenment. True beauty of spiritual aspiration is to, to know that we're moving, always moving towards it, even if you don't feel like it. So if we try to fast forward everything, how about we're going through experiences and we want to get out of them really quick so we don't integrate all the examples and all the experiences and all the feelings that we have. We fast forward. And guess what? What happens? Then we have to keep coming back, reincarnating, because enlightenment is a process that we all have to go through. And we're using every experience, all the realizations, all the flashes of oneness, all those things to begin integrating into our lives so that we can get the point. Because if we don't get the point, I, we were having lunch the other day, and remember the girls were talking about something about looking back at the light instead of, yeah, looking forward or something. I think what Marcella was saying that, and that, you know, uh, you got there faster. Nobody's going to get there faster until we do our work. All of us are here in a process of enlightenment to do our work and to go through all the things and to bring up all the stuff from other lives that we're here to, to really get rid of. So even if we think we're not enlightened, everything in your life, every situation, every person is moving you towards that enlightenment, whether you know it or not. And we're here to realize enlightenment is not a destination we are pushing towards. We don't want to miss the flashes. Everything that's happening to us is really there for such an important reason. Because each of those is needed for us to become fully realized being. You know, if you tried to teach a little kid um, calculus, you can't teach a little kid calculus. They have to have a foundation. They have to have the algebra and all the things that come before it so that as they integrate that stuff, as they embody that stuff, then they begin to understand and they can do calculus. It's the same with us. We're integrating. Every person that comes into your life is bringing a gift, and you're integrating it and bringing it in so you can become fully realized. And if we fast forward and skip it, we just keep reincarnating because we're not learning those lessons. It's like fast forwarding a DVD to the, to the things at the end who did the movie, the production and all that, and skipping the movie. 
You're here to integrate that. Really, even when it's uncomfortable, we're here to do that until we finish this journey of enlightenment. So it's not a destination, but a journey where we are here to integrate and digest all of your experiences, everything you're going through. So how does enlightenment move? And how does it act? How does it speak? And there's a key or a more direct path. You know, we can take detours. How many of us have taken detours? I've taken a few detours. <laughs> I mean, I've taken a few detours, and it's not always a scenic route. You have Paul? What'd you say? I said I invent them. <laughs> you invent them. Well, I've taken a few, but you know what? It's not always a scenic route when you take those detours. So what's a more direct path? So what is the path? The path of realization and integration of the higher self. The most direct path is literally a road that we walk. And we walk at home. How many of you remember the song, I'll take the high road, you take the low road, and I'll oh, be in yeah. Scotland before you? Oh, yeah. Well, you might get to Scotland before me, <laughs> but that you've got to take the high road to get enlightenment. And that's the whole thing. We have to take the high road. And how many of us really understand what the high road is? And, you know, we get so caught up in our emotions and the things that are going on in our life. But it's the high road where we first realize, we begin to wake up, that things are there to really help us. Everything in our life is there to help us gain that enlightenment. I know Matthew. <laughs> because the only thing that can never be taken from us, now listen to this, and this is, I, I, all of the people that have been in conspiracy theories, all the people that are on YouTube, there's only one thing that can't be taken from you. And that is the love that you cultivate in your heart. You know, I love David Icke. And I used to think he was like way out there because he was all into conspiracy theories. But now he says there's only one realization. There's only one truth, and that truth is love. All the rest of it is an illusion that we're going through. So what we're really here in this life to cultivate, what enlightenment really is, and what Swami's probably going to talk about this afternoon, is cultivating that love. And how do we do it? We cultivate it by taking the high road with people, the road of integrity where we insist on walking with relationship with ourselves and others, it shows whether we are on that road or not. So look at your relationship. To really see if you're on that road or not. If you're really on that road of integrity. You can think you're a spiritual master, but the road to integrity really reveals the truth of where you are right now. Do you take the road at every possible moment in your life? And that's the whole thing. You know, it's easy to be so nice when people are nice to you, isn't it? I mean, when people love you, when I come in here Wednesdays and Thursdays, you know, Roger and Nathan and Taylor's here, and everybody just loves, we all, we have a love fest, and it's so easy. But how about when those difficult people come into your life? It's so easy to take the high road, because we're all on the same path. You know, it's like we're playing the same parts. We're playing the part of love in here. But how about those people that come in and play a different part for you? that really rev your engine up or upset you. You know, that's when it's your choice whether to take the high road or the low road. You might get to Scotland first, but you won't get to enlightenment first if you take the low road. We gotta take the high road. So to put you in a situation, everything is here to put you in a situation to cultivate your highest vibration and your clearest state of mastery. Everything. And let me tell you, I'm talking from experience because my life too, I've been going through things. Things that keep coming up and coming up and coming up. Things that you don't know you have. But those people, when, when I talked about Twin Flames recently, those people, and a Twin Flame so, seems so romantic, doesn't it? Well, not. A Twin Flame is not romantic. It's somebody that comes into your life and begins to build that flame in you that brings all your stuff to the surface. They're the ones that help you grow the fastest. Really bring it to the surface so you can see it. But when that comes up, those are the ones that are really cultivating you helping you to really to, to bring your highest vibration and helping you to choose the high road instead of the low road. Every person in your life is here as a player to act in a way that sharpens your skills. What if we look at people like that? Even our children like that. How many of you have got children that do everything you want? You know, and they just pick the right mates and they live their life just like you would like them. You know, I've got two daughters. Do you think they raise their kids exactly? No. But those things are in our life. We pick those kids. My older daughter used to always say, Mom, I picked you to, to loosen you up. Because she was like, always said exactly what was on her mind. I was always, you know, much different than that. But she said, I'm here to loosen you up. And she was. So they're here to play that part in our life. So it's how much time you decide to spend on the high road of integrity. That it's really the directest path to enlightenment. 
And we can take the low road many times. Many times we can do that. So, <clears throat> which discerns how quickly you're going to evolve as a spiritual master. Because all of the situations and the people in your life are hypothetical people's situations for you to choose. Are you going to go on the high road? Or are we going to take the low road? I mean, and I'm going to talk about what that is. It's sometimes to be called the road less traveled. Remember there was a book years ago called the oh, road yeah. less traveled. Yeah, yeah. Why is it that? Because many of us don't want to choose to, to take the high road. So it's not, you know, we're not bumping into everybody on that high road, are we? <laughs> Most people are just reactionary and reacting to everything. So many refuse to take it because being on it means that everything is always conspiring for your highest good and is helping you grow and evolve, even if your ego, now listen, is inconvenienced, frustrated, or threatened. And that's what the high road is all about. Because the high road really begins to help you get rid of that ego, helps it to integrate it in. So where, <laughs> that's where the road really begins, and we're willing to see everyone as an actor on our path of enlightenment. What if we looked at people like that? You know, we call this life an illusion, but we get so caught up in it, don't we? We get so caught up in the illusion that we you know, get sucked in and we react to everything. The high road, listen to this, is when you're willing to give everyone the benefit of the doubt, even when their behavior is not aligned with what you would like, how you'd like to be treated or how you'd like to be act. And when you know they are acting, even when you know they're acting unconsciously. Why? Because they are giving you an opportunity to choose the high road. Like when I come in on Wednesday and Thursday, I don't have to choose the high road. Everybody here loves me, and I love everybody. We just, we're just like on heaven's road and floating around on Wednesdays and Thursdays in here. But then I go home or go out here, and then, you know what, it's not just like that. We're not all playing the same parts out there. That's when I got to choose to take the high road. And it's not always easy. I'm, I'm talking to me today, too. I'm not just talking to you, but I'm talking to me today. Because, because they are giving us an opportunity to choose. And when you choose the high road, you'll always be in situations with characters that don't choose the high road. Because they're not going to choose what you are. That's why we have unconscious people around us. If everybody was like Nathan and Roger and uh, Taylor and everybody, how easy would that be? But we would all be playing the same parts. So there would never be an opportunity for us to choose the high road. And it's just to give you a chance to rise above and walk that high road. And even if your righteous ego thinks, well, that's not fair. They have a lot of nerve treating me like that. And what does that righteous ego say when we're treated like that? You know, that's exactly what it is. You are absolutely right. It's not about fairness. Life is not about fairness. Life is too perfect to be fair. Because if everything was fair, how would you ever grow? How would you ever grow? How would you ever have that choice to take the high road if everybody treated you just like you wanted to be treated? Everything was equalized out. How would you ever choose the high road? Life's too perfect. Fairness involves retribution. You do this for me, and I'll do that for you. And we can clear the slate. That's what five-year-olds do. But what the Bible says is we're here to grow up and mature. Which reminds me of this principle I'm going to bring out of the Bible, which I say is a metaphysical book of spiritual principles. And in Philippians it says that, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you enter into trials of many kind. Why would it say that? Count it all joy when you're going to get in the midst of a big dilemma. Get all happy. How can it even tell us that? It means people in situations that are unfair and hard and difficult start to get happy. Because you know that the testing of your faith, what your beliefs really are, develops perseverance, persistence, resolution, and grit for you to stay on the high road. It's those difficult times when you have the choice to take the low road of reacting, getting mad, retribution, and all that, or taking the high road. And this is what it, the next verse says. It says, allow perseverance to finish its work so that you may be mature, complete, lacking nothing. What is enlightenment? Exactly what the Bible is talking about. It's the time that we lack nothing, when we are fully realized as divinity. And all of the players in your play are really the tools that are helping you choose the high road, choose that road of integrity. In other words, allow it to inspire you to choose to stay on that high road no matter what comes your way. You know, we can all make excuses, can't we? To develop your enlightenment, 
as an inspiring master instead of when people come to show you and become, you become five years old again. And I sometimes I become five years old too. <laughs> Pam does too, I've noticed that in Pam. <laughs> but sometimes we can become five, you know, that wasn't fair. Why didn't that happen to me? Why did they do, you know? And we become five years old again. And what do we do? We start blaming the blame game. How many of us play that blame game? I would never have acted that if you didn't treat me like that. You know, it was all your fault. And what do we, what if I, I watched my little grandkids last night. And what are they saying? I had gone by their house. That's what, exactly what they're saying. They always, you know, project that blame. Or it's your fault. You know, and Harlow was taking a toy. It's his fault. He can't even speak, but it's his fault. You know, that's, that's what five-year-olds do. And we do that, too. So we start blaming instead of rising and taking that high road. That's how you can tell your spiritual ego. It always gets down to blaming others for your behavior. So if you're blaming, guess what? You still have a spiritual ego. And that spiritual ego is what's blaming. And when you choose the high road, it's when you begin to feel the gravity and the power of being more gracious and more kind, no matter how people treat you. No matter how people treat you. That you can really choose to be gracious and kind. And I've had a lot of opportunity here, too, because everybody is not in the high road in here. A lot of people try to help me, really help me to see where I'm not speaking right or doing right. I've had a lot of help during the years. People come and say, let, let me just tell you what I think you should be doing. Uh -huh. And I have to say, I can even, you know, go and say, well, you know, this is why I did that. Or, blame it. or take the high road and be kind and gracious back to them and listen and try to see where they're coming from. And you realize it's not unfair at all. But it's because they're playing a part for you. They're a flashcard for you. Reminding you, of course I'm more gracious than others are to me. What I lack, I give to myself and I give to others. And that's the high road. That's how we really start to begin evolving. Because their flashcards are my path to enlightenment. And they flash into our lives. And they come to help us. And don't think that all of us right now, so many of us I've talked to recently, we're getting a lot of flashcards. I mean, because Roger's not back there. Because we're those of us that are really on the path to enlightenment, it's like these things are coming to us to help us accelerate our growth if we really determine to stay on that path. So welcome to the high road. You, you, you treat people like the divine, and they treat you however they wish. That's the way it goes. That's exactly the way it goes. And the high, the highway that, that's the highway to heaven. When yeah. You don't care how other people treat you, and you continue to treat them with graciousness and kindness. There's the highway to enlightenment, and at a certain point, just being consciously on that high road will give you all the nourishment and all the acceptance that other people don't give you. Just by being on that high road, there's something inside of you that begins to feed you and nourish you that you don't need other people's acceptance. And that's really what part of enlightenment, too that we don't have to have all of those accolades and acceptance of other people. The Bible calls it turning the other cheek. How many times does it say, turn the other cheek? But we've got to know why we're turning that other cheek. We don't want to just get slapped again. We've got to understand what the process is. Because it gives us an opportunity to allow that spark within us to forgive and to choose the high road when people treat us like that. To be able to really step into that forgiveness to enlightenment. And you begin to feel that there's something in you inspiring you to be more gracious, to be more loving, to be more kind, no matter how people treat you. There's something, once you spark that flame, it begins to grow within you because you feel that. And it's that feeling. But when you open up to it, you respond to someone else's judgment of your character as an opportunity to respond with a blessing. I mean, <clears throat> when somebody's judging you and telling you what you're doing wrong or what they see in you, instead of retribution right away, what if you stop a moment, take a breath, and count it as a blessing? Count it as a blessing that you can give back that love and graciousness, not responding to what they're saying, but knowing that they're a character, they're a tool, they're a, they're a pawn, they're a player in your play that's there to really help you on that road to enlightenment. Because you know it's pressing you on the path. And everything is pressing us. And it's another chance to choose that high road. Because if there's a spiritual ego or a righteous ego, you wouldn't be caught dead doing that, would you? You would give them, you would give them right back what they gave to you, wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, if you have that ego and that righteous ego going, what do you want to do? 
You want to give back to them why, you know, what they gave to you, or you want to use the blame game, why you did it, instead of receiving it as a blessing and saying, this is a chance for me to take the high road. <clears throat> so why? Because this is the force that develops our spiritual, that destroys our spiritual ego. How, how many here don't have an ego at all? <laughs> Nobody has their hand up? Everybody's got an ego in here? I think you're right. And so what I'm talking about today is what gets rid of it, what integrates it. It never gets rid of it, but what integrates it is when we can do this. And as you integrate the ego, you become fully embodied of your divine wholeness. And that's what it's talking about. The high road is the force that destroys the spiritual ego. And if the spiritual ego is not properly disarmed, unraveled, and integrated, on, you'll have a greater spiritual, you can have a great spiritual facade, but it will only take a few pushes and tugs till you turn into a five-year-old. How many of us, I've talked about years ago when I was in the church and I had this woman I so admired and she prayed like, God, it was like heaven. The angels came down when she prayed. And the minute she stopped praying, she was mean as a snake. I mean, she had this spiritual facade, but all it took was a push or a shove and she turned into a five-year-old again. You see, what we're talking about is total transformation. We're talking about really changing ourselves from the inside out. So on the outside, you can be a great spiritual facade, but it will only take a few pushes for you to make you a five-year-old again, and you begin that blame game. It's somebody else's fault, or they did it. But the holy road, or the high road is where we take the opportunity to, to cultivate our highest maturity. And that's what the Bible too says, too. When we were a child, we spoke as a child. But it says it's time for us to grow up and speak now as a man, as a woman, as a realized being, and not just to react like we did when we were children, somebody took our toy. It's living a life of intention. It says, I decide that I am going to treat myself and others, no matter how they treat me, with love and grace. And that's the real power of intention. I choose to show others respect, even if they choose to disrespect me. Because why? Because that's the high road. And if you can feel the vibration of the high road, you'll know it's in that most powerful force in existence. Once you know, how do you feel when you treat somebody the way they treat you? How does it make you feel? Not good. Not good. But how does it make you feel when you rise above it and you choose the high road? You begin to feel that it is the most powerful force in the universe when we chose, choose this high road. And it's the road that when you fully walk it, it will not allow you to hurt, be hurt by a single person in existence. Because when you can rise above and walk that high road and know it doesn't depend on how others treat you, you're not looking for that accolades or that acceptance or the fairness. But you're walking the high road and it doesn't depend on how others treat you. Who can hurt you? Who can hurt you when we're really walking that? And I'm talking about this. This is an intention and aspiration for all of us. Who can hurt? Nobody, not a single creature. Because nothing you're afraid of can exist in the high rate. It can't breathe in that atmosphere of love. It just can't. Today's our opportunity. You know, we're getting to the end of the year. We make all these intentions and everything. And Kim and I are going to do that new moon, new year ceremony on, um, on New Year's Day in the evening where we really not just make an intention, but we want to shift our energy into the intention of love, into the intention that we're going to take this high road. We're, we really are those five-minute mile people that are breaking through for others, and it's going to be easier, easier for others when we learn to do these things. So today is an opportunity to fully step into the high road and be, become gracious and kind and loving no matter what. Because you are on a much bigger journey right now than most people on planet Earth. There's a lot of us across the globe. But you sitting in here this morning are really the, the, the pioneers. We're the ones that are showing the way. We're lighting the way for others. And I know it's great when I said when your graciousness meets somebody else and your love meets somebody else. That's great. I, on Wednesdays and Thursdays, it's great in here. But those are people that are playing the same part I am. They're not people that are really stretching me. They're just giving me a, a rest, that I can rest in their love and rest in that. But then you go out and you're going to meet those people that are really playing the parts for you to grow in your life. And it's when you meet others that don't respond to you that it helps you really fully establish yourself on the high road. And the high road really begins to wake you up to your ego. It will be irrational. 
If you're thinking that your ego, when somebody disrespects you or treats you bad and you're, you know, to your ego, I'm not going to take that. I can remember when I was young, somebody would do something to me. I never was a big speaker up. I didn't like, I never liked fights or anything like that. But I would be vacuuming and I'd think, I should have said this. I should have said that. You know how you, 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 you don't have the words in your mouth when somebody grabs you. But I, and so it was like this little animal I had in my head in a little cage and I put it away to be nice. But then I let that little animal out and I'd be vacuuming and saying what I should have said to those people. I should have told them right off. I should, you know, and I put, but I figured out, finally I had to let that thing out of the cage and let it go. Because that's not the high road and it never made me feel good. But that's how we do. Our, to our ego, it's an irrational. If you let someone in front of you in the grocery store, how many times have you let somebody maybe put their cart in front of you and they just ram past you and don't even respect you or say thanks or anything? We say thank you. If, you're giving me a chance to have a blessing. Or somebody, you, you know, you let in a car in and they, you know, just don't appreciate it. It's those times that we can take the high road. We don't need those accolades and all of that. And you open a door for somebody, you know, and they just walk through without even giving you a look. Those are the times that we really can take the high road. Taking the high road, the righteousness begins to bump out of us. We have this righteous ego thing that we think we should be thanked with, that we should, you know, real giving. And I forget, uh, when I spoke at Amazing Woman <clears throat> the other night, it was one of the quotes that said, I can't remember, it, if you give without expecting, it's real giving. If you give thinking you're going to get something back, that's bargaining. Yeah. And that's so true. That's bargaining. What we have to do is give without expecting anything back. And you know the Bible says, don't let your right hand know what your left hand's doing. Give without even getting the, the recognition for giving. That's really the real powerful way to give. That's really on the road to enlightenment too. So the, the high road starts to awaken the power within you where it's not unfair for you, for your love and kindness to be one-sided transaction. How about that? Your love and kindness, it's okay if it's a one-sided transaction. And when love is given from the purest part of your being, your love would be so pure just by giving it to someone, it will purify your whole being. That's when it purifies you the most. When you're getting nothing in return. When the person doesn't deserve it. Because love only has to be one-sided transaction. And that's really the part that purifies your whole being. So what are we learning? We're learning that to evolve, to really become enlightened, to really be on that path, we have to take the high road, which means that we are treated unfairly, that we aren't respected maybe how we always want to be respected, that maybe we're not sitting in the front or whatever, but we take those opportunities to know that it's our choice. I can make a choice to take the high road or I can make a choice to come out like a five-year-old again and have to do it all over again. And another thing is we need to know that we can't hurry the process because enlightenment is a process of integrating all of these experiences, integrating all of these things that don't respect us, integrating all of these things until we can be fully realized as that divine being. And so that's where all of us are right now. And it's your choice in every moment we're making a choice. Do I always choose it? No. Am I making an intention to choose it more? Yes. Making an intention to choose the high road. To choose that road that doesn't matter how I'm treated, but what I give back is love, graciousness, and compassion. And so it is. Oh, yeah.